According to Chinese medicine, coldness is the public enemy number one of our health. So why is coldness uh, such important for our health and what are the consequences of coldness on our body and our mind? And more important, what can we do to prevent and to manage the damages caused by coldness? So in this video, we'll go through all the Chinese medicine theories around the harmful effect of coldness, uh, the impact on our body, and also give you some techniques to, um, to be able to prevent and manage these conditions. So we will start to talk about external coldness. So what we mean by external coldness is, is really the weather. So um, um, a cold weather, and especially what we call wind cold. So when it's both windy and cold um, in uh, the, the weather. Um, and this has um, an impact on what we call the surface in Chinese medicine, which is really about the musculoskeletal system and the respiratory system um, in general. So the first thing we'll see is the, the impact of cold weather on the respiratory system. And um, there is a lot of things. So first, um, a cold air can, what can, it can uh, reduce the ability of the um, immune system to fight against aggressions from microbes and viruses. So this is why we talk about catching cold, right? It's when it's, we get a, a, a breeze of cold air or maybe, you know, there is air conditioning going on or something like that. And we can, we can get cold, right? We can catch a cold. This is because the immune system is, is reduced and then the microbes can start to uh, create an infection. So that's the first aspect. Uh, there is also the idea that cold, um, cold air can congeal um, the mucus that is in our, protecting our airways. Um, so when it does that, it can create some phlegm, um, and also it you know, will uh, impair the ability of the respiratory system to fight against aggression by using uh, production of mucus. Um, and the third aspect is um, that the cold air will also constrict the airways, um, which need to be uh, unblocked to be able to um, function well. So when constricting the airways, really blocking the, the flow of air in the airways. So one of the uh, consequences of the impact of coldness is, is uh, as we already mentioned, uh, catching cold, which is getting an inflammatory um, uh, bacterial or microbe um, or virus infection in our respiratory tract. So we're talking, of course, about common cold, but also all kinds of viruses and microbes, including COVID really, which um, has been affected to, to, to be sometimes um, more impactful when, when the weather is, is very cold. Um, so that's the first one. Uh, the second one is uh, rhinitis, which is also uh, in Chinese medicine associated a lot with coldness. And it's very easy to, um, to have um, episodes of rhinitis. So it can be chronic rhinitis and then there's acute episodes due to cold weather or due to catching cold from air conditioning or something else. Um, finally, there is asthma, which is also the same as rhinitis. Um, a lot connected with the cold weather and uh, recurrent episodes of catching cold again and again. Um, and so we consider in Chinese medicine that this uh, wind cold or cold weather is affecting especially so this part of the body, which is the, the back and the neck area, and uh, which is also related with all the respiratory systems. So that's why we need to get rid of this coldness here to make these um, conditions better, rhinitis, um, asthma, etc. But we'll talk about that later. The second uh, system that is impacted by coldness is the muscular, or the musculoskeletal system. And it's very straightforward because we tend to say, um, we tend to say that we need warm up when we're doing exercise first, otherwise we may injure ourselves. So it makes a lot of sense that warmth is very useful for the musculoskeletal system. And 2000 years ago in our Chinese medicine classic, the Yellow Emperor classics, there is um, a citation that uh, saying that when um, the, the Yangtze, which is the warmth, is uh, making the muscles smooth, 
um, and uh, so we need this this um, warmth from the body, from the energy to have smooth metal, and that's why we need the warm up so much. So what can happen if um, we get cold from the outside? So a typical example would be neck pain. We see that in the clinic all the time and it's generally a white collar who work in our office and there is air conditioning all the time. What happens in summer when they're sweating, the pores are open uh, and this cold weather uh, starts to impact to, to, to impact their, their muscles, especially in the neck and back area. And uh, this creates tensions in the muscles and that's why they, they develop this neck pain. That's very common in the clinic. Um, another thing is fibromyalgia, which is also related with coldness in the muscles, in the musculoskeletal tissues, that is constricting all these smooth tissues and tendons, etc., and creating some tension and, and pain all around the body. Uh, so that's a second um, aspect. And the third aspect I would say is arthritis. So again, um, problem to a joint can be osteoarthritis, but it's, we see that in, in rheumato um, rheumatoid arthritis, other type of inflammatory condition as well. Um, we all know that cold and damp weather will um, make this joint pain, this arthritis worse. Um, so it's another example of how the um, coldness can affect the soft tissues, the joint, um, tendons, etc., and uh, create pain um, in the body. The third aspect is something we actually may not think about that much, and it's not a very common sense, especially in the West, is gynecological uh, conditions. And um, the reason a reason for that is because coldness tend to affect the body from the lower part of the body, especially from the feet. And we have uh, three channels uh, that comes from the feet and goes all the way to the pubic area, to, to, to genital organs. So in the female, it would be to the uterus. And when we are affected by coldness, especially from the feet or from the legs, um, this coldness can actually go um, upwards up to the uterus and create what we call uterus coldness. So that means um, some gynecological conditions that are related um, with coldness. And the most, um, I would say the most common one or the most straightforward one would be period pain, which uh, we know is uh, very easily affected by coldness. And um, especially when young girls, or not necessarily young girls, but when um, females um, want to wear um, skirts, and it may already be quite uh, cold um, in, the, in terms of weather, uh, then the coldness can very easily um, go from the, from the legs um, up to, the, up to the, the genital organs and create this period pain or aggravate this period pain. And we see that even in conditions such as endometriosis, which is more and more common nowadays, and which is not so surprising considering the lifestyle um, that is going on in, in modern societies. So another one is infertility. And again, this infertility is very commonly related with coldness in the uterus. And uh, we tend to want to warm up the uterus to, to make it better. It's not always the case, but coldness in the uterus is definitely one of the um, main patterns of um, infertility and period pain, etc. So what can we do to prevent um, and manage the damage um, from the coldness or cold weather um, to our body, the respiratory, the muscular and the gynecological systems? So first thing, of course, will be to avoid wind cold weather as much as possible. So when you know that the weather is very cold, you will have to wear more clothes and try to be especially careful when, um, when you're sweating. So it can be either um, after a, a hot bath or after a hot shower, or it can be after exercising. Um, anything that makes you sweat, you will have to be double careful because your pores are open and they will be very vulnerable to wind cold from the exterior. So that's one thing. Um, 
be very careful again about this area of the body so the upper back and the neck area we have lots of points that are called the wind points so we have Pong Fu here we have Pong Men here um, all these points will be very vulnerable to wind cold from the from the from the back so be very careful and make sure you cover these areas um, appropriately when it's when it's cold um, now um, another thing will be to, to avoid from the feet coldness from the feet because we have a saying in Chinese medicine that coldness attacks from the feet so in order to avoid this coldness from the feet we have to be careful to wear socks um, that may seem straightforward but very important and feel free to wear two pairs of socks three pairs of socks it fits very really cold weather there's no problem with that now if you have a cold floor at home make sure you don't uh, walk on this floor even with your socks because it's not enough you will have to wear slippers and especially thick slippers so you're sure that your feet will not get cold from the coldness of the floor. Um, it's something that is very important, again, especially in these um, gynecological um, conditions. So this is mostly for prevention. What can we do if the coldness is already in the body? So one uh, very common, we have lots of ways to deal with that in Chinese medicine. Uh, one way will be using cupping and gua sha. So again, this will be very useful for, especially for the back area, to remove the the coldness from this from this area. So very good for um, respiratory infections, for asthma, for rhinitis, um, for and also for musculoskeletal pain as well. We use it all the time. Another way to treat this external coldness will be with hot bath. Um, and especially if you use some some herbs with the bath, so you can use a bit of ginger, uh, shantian, um, aye, etc., um, to warm up the the bath and, and make it have a um, even warmer effect. And even if you don't have a, a bathtub, think about food bath, which can be excellent, especially in gynecological conditions uh, that are related with coldness. Um, again. Think about using shantiang, ayam, etc., or some blood moving herbs um, to, um, to remove this coldness from the channels. We can think, of course, about massage. Um, massage are very warming, uh, warming the channels, especially, and moving qi and blood in the channels. Um, and especially if you use essential oils, so I do that a lot. Um, I tend to use wintergreen, uh, juniper berries, or cinnamon, these kind of essential oils to improve and increase the, the warming effect of the massage. And we can use them for, of course, for gua sha and cupping as well, these essential oils. Um, I know another way that is very straightforward is using moxa. And um, lots of people can use it just at home, it's very convenient. Um, you can check our video on moxibustion because we have a full video explaining how to do this, um, perform these methods. Um, so this is also an aspect, and we have also in case of, I would say, persistent pain and severe conditions, we have fire needles, um, which um, is basically burning the acupuncture needle before we insert them in the body. Uh, this is a, uh, technically is a bit painful, so that's why we don't use it that much but it can be very effective for some um, cold-related pain, um, some severe cases. Of course, think about all the herbs that uh, we use as a decoction uh, to um, relieve um, the coldness from the surface. So think about marron, gui zhi, feng feng, etc. Et um, and they can be supplemented also with uh, young warming herbs, um, fu zi, rou gui, Ganjiang, etc. etc. Now let's talk a bit about internal coldness. So when we talk about internal coldness, uh, this comes really from the intake of cold food and drinks. Um, so what do we mean by cold food and drinks? Of course, this is about the temperature, so especially water. Um, so in, in Chinese culture, we tend to use hot water and not cold water. And you might start to say, yes, but I don't drink cold water, I just drink normal water. Well, what we mean really by cold water is room temperature water. So 
the water tends to be yin and cold in nature. That's why we're using, um, for example, canals to cool down the city, or that's why we like to jump in the swimming pool in summer to cool us down. So water, by in a sense, it has this cooling nature. Uh, but this is very harmful to the body because our body needs um, yang qi to be able to uh, function well. Um, so by yang qi, we mean really the energy and the warmth of the body. And this is our whole metabolic system, physiological system. So think about the um, respiratory system, cardiovascular system, everything, digestion, reproductive functions, everything relies on this energy and warmth to be able to function well. Um, our mind as well, or being able to you know, think properly, etc. Everything relies on this ability of the yang qi to, to be, have enough and also to be able to move around. So when we use um, cold food and drinks, uh, this will reduce the, this whole um, uh, warmth and energy of the system and also it will um, congeal, so it will block the movement of the yang qi. So, which means that all the physiological functions will be will start to be impaired. Um, so that's one of the reasons why um, we tend to drink hot water in um, Chinese culture, because we want to avoid all this damage caused by the uh, room temperature um, water. Uh, of course, you absolutely have to avoid all these icy drinks. So drinks directly from the fridge or um, ice cubes and all these things. So I would say just avoid them completely. There's never it's never a good option to have icy drinks at all. Um, in addition to that, think about fruits as well, and especially fruits that are um, rich in water. So um, Think about pear, for example, or um, uh, watermelon, which is also a good example. Um, very cold fruits. Um, think about all the um, exotic fruits as well, such as the kiwi fruit, that uh, is very cold as well. So all these fruits, especially when they are taken raw, um, they tend to damage the, the young tea as well. So we'll need to limit as much as possible this type of, of food. Um, even though I know it, they may be considered as healthy uh, food um, from a modern perspective. So another type of food is raw vegetables um, and especially which type of vegetable? The ones that are full, in, full of water as well. So we mentioned already that water tends to be cold in nature, right? Um, so think about green vegetables like salads, um, think also about tomatoes, um, think about um, cucumbers as well. So all these type of vegetables, they're very cold. And if you take them raw, um, it will damage your digestive system and your young qi. So another type of food to avoid. Um, in addition to that, any food that is taken directly from the fridge um, uh, or is consumed um, cold or even freezing, that's always a, a bad decision. Uh, if you, if you um, want to eat something from the fridge, you have to wait 20 minutes or half an hour before you consume it. The last one we want to talk about is the milk. Um, again, from a Chinese medicine perspective, milk has a cold nature and tends to be cooling. So that's why people in China generally don't take milk that much, and especially if it's cold milk. So there, there might be some health benefits of milk, of course, but again, you have to balance it a little bit. Um, if you really want to have milk, try to have it warm and do not take it all the time, not every day. Um, it should be something that is uh, consumed from time to time only. So the first impact of these um, cold food and drinks we just mentioned, so um, um, ambient temperature, water, or raw fruits, raw vegetables, uh, milk, etc. The first thing will be impacting the digestive system. And it's quite straightforward because um, these cold food, they will tend to constrict the intestines, um, which will lack their elasticity and smooth movement. Um, it tends also to congeal the food together um, and make it harder. So it will be more difficult 
to um, to process and to to transform it. Um, it's very straightforward when you think about it because when you increase the heat of any substances really um, you, until you break down naturally right or it will start to dissolve or it will tend to become smaller parts and that's why the same thing happens in the, in the guts if we um, increase the heat it will make it easier to transform the food but if you reduce the heat if you reduce the temperature it will congeal make blocks and become harder to digest and also think about the microbiome because um, there needs to be a very specific temperature for some um, bacteria to exist in our in our gut, and these bacteria have a really important role in digestion. So if we have the wrong temperature in our gut, we may not have the right microbes, um, which will impact also the digestion. So we see this impact of cold um, of cold nature of cold food and cold drinks. In conditions such as chronic diarrhea, um, we see that a lot, which is most of the time related with coldness. Um, stomach pain, a lot of cases is um, related with coldness as well. Generally, if it's not stress related, it will be related with coldness. Um, and finally, IBS is also another example widely present in Western societies and cold food and uh, drinks are one of the main reasons of that. We also see the impact of cold food and um, drinks in metabolic system. Um, so think about that. When we're reducing the energy of the whole system, it means it will become more difficult to use this energy to transform all the substances in the body, isn't it? Think about conditions such as obesity, uh, which is the body having trouble to um, metabolizing all the fat tissues. And uh, when we are having uh, cold drinks and food, we reduce its ability to transform um, the fat tissues, which means more accumulation of fat tissues in the body. Think about diabetes as well. So again, we are reducing the ability of the body to transform sugar, which means the um, uh, glycemia will, will start to increase. Um, in addition to the impact on the digestive system and the metabolic system, there's also a detrimental impact on the immune function. So think about that. When you're having an infection, your body will create fever. And why does your body create fever? Because when the temperature of the body is higher, the immune system will be enhanced, it will be stronger, and it will be more able to fight against microbes and viruses, isn't it? So if, if um, higher temperature helps the body to fight against infections, uh, if you reduce the temperature of the body with cold food and drinks, you will reduce the ability of the immune system to fight against enemies. So of course, this means um, that people who have um, what we call a young deficiency constitution, so who have um, a constitutional lack of warmth and energy in their body, they will tend to be very vulnerable to wind cold and to infections in general. So we'll, they will tend to have respiratory infections more than other people. Um, in addition to that, there is also allergies. Um, so we already mentioned rhinitis and um, asthma, uh, but we see that also in some skin, uh, some skin allergies as well. So when we're reducing um, the, the warmth and the energy of the body, um, it, it tends again to develop this type of um, allergic reactions. And um, many people who have allergic reactions and allergies do have this constitutional young deficiency, so this lack of warmth and energy in the body. Finally, there is also um, some people mention the um, importance of young tea to fight against cancer and that some people who have cancer um, may have at the origin um, again a young deficiency uh, constitution so they um, basically their immune system is too weak to fight against uh, cancer cells and has trouble to keep them under control so if you have a young deficiency constitution you may have the following symptoms um, or signs and symptoms so your tongue may be uh, more pale and um, a bit dark as well your face tend to, may tend to be a bit more pale and a bit dark as well. 
um, same for your nails and your lips. Um, also, you may experience coldness in the limbs, especially in the feet. Um, you may have diarrhea easily, you may react um, very quickly to, to unhealthy foods. Um, you may develop some pain in your body as well, um, quite relatively easily. Um, and finally, you may, you may feel some coldness on your belly um, as well. So, if you have this young deficiency, um, what can you do about it? One of the first things, of course, would be to avoid cold food and cold drinks. So, avoid even room temperature water and try to have hot water, right? Avoid having too, much of, too many fruits during the day. And when you're eating vegetables, try to have them cooked. So simply by um, having stir-fried and um, um, baked food, for example, uh, you may be able to increase the warmth um, nature of the food, which will make it um, better to digest and produce energy in the body. Think about using spices as well. So um, I like to use a lot of spices when I am having vegetables as well um, to increase a little bit the, um, the warm nature. Um, so you can think about things such as cinnamon, um, ginger, think about clove, um, all these um, fennel seeds, all, all these um, uh, spices can increase the, um, the warmth, na warm nature of the food. And you can th use them in beverages as well, so ginger on you know, fennel seeds. Um, they're very good to use in infusion as well. In addition to that, think about um, um, herbs that um, so they, we're talking about decoction now, um, or granules. Um, think about herbs that have a um, hot nature, such as again, foods, rou gui, ganjiang, xiao hui xiang, uh, gui zhi. Think about um, shangjiang as well. Um, think about um, Ba Ji Tian, Tu Si all these herbs have, have a, a warming nature, so they can be very helpful um, if people have a young deficiency constitution. Again, another one is um, meditation. Um, it may not seem very straightforward for, for young deficiency, but meditation can actually take the fire from the upper jaw and bring it down to the lower jaw. So that's also a very good technique to uh, bring down the fire and keep our, um, keep our fire in the body. Um, so why is it so important to keep the body, keep the warmth in the lower jaw? Because here the waist area uh, where there is a lower abdomen and lower back, this is the source of our yang qi. So this is really where our warmth and energy comes from and it's especially important to keep the warmth here in, in this region. So if you have internal uh, coldness, be very careful about um, your clothes as well. Um, you really want to make sure that this area here is uh, well protected and, and kept warm. So we center, sometimes we even use uh, like heat pad or um, uh, they, are, they are also like a uh, herbal uh, pads that can be used, um, even patches, herbal patches, these sort of things, to keep this area very warm and, um, and um, remove the coldness from the internal part of the body. I am Johan Berling, a clinician, lecturer and researcher in Chinese medicine. Please feel free to like this video if you did and subscribe to our channel for more videos on health, psychology and Chinese medicine.